midway in our life's journey, I went astray from the straight road and awoke to find myself alone in a dark wood. How shall I say what wood that was? I never saw so drear, so rank, so arduous a wilderness. Its very memory gives a shape to fear. Death could scarce be more bitter than that place. But, since it came to good, I will recount all that I found revealed there by God's grace. How I came to it, I cannot rightly say. So drugged and loose with sleep I had become when I first wandered there from the true way. But, at the far end of that valley of evil whose maze had sapped my very heart with fear, I found myself before a little hill and lifted up my eyes. Its shoulders glowed already with the sweet rays of that planet whose virtue leads men straight on every road, and the shining strengthened me against the fright whose agony had racked the lake of my heart through all the terrors of that piteous night. Just as a swimmer, who with his last breath flounders ashore from perilous seas, might turn to memorize the wide water of his death, so did I turn, my soul still fugitive from death's surviving image, to stare down that past that none had ever left alive. And there I lay to rest from my heart's race, till calm and breath returned to me, then rose and pushed up that dead slope at such a pace each footfall rose above the last, and lo, almost at the beginning of the rise, I faced a spotted leopard, all tremor and flow and gouty pelt. And it would not pass, but stood so blocking my every turn, that time and again I was on the verge of turning back to the wood. This fell at the first widening of the dawn, as the sun was climbing Aries with those stars that rode with him to light the new creation. Thus the holy hour and the sweet season of commemoration did much to arm my fear of that bright murderous beast with their good omen. Yet not so much but what I shook with dread at sight of a great lion that broke upon me, raging with hunger, its enormous head held high as if to strike a mortal terror into the very air, and down his track a she-wolf drove upon me, a starved horror ravening and wasted beyond all belief. She seemed a rack for avarice, gaunt and craving, oh many the souls she has brought to endless grief. She brought such heaviness upon my spirit at sight of her savagery and desperation, I die from every hope of that high summit. And like a miser, eager in acquisition, but desperate in self-reproach, when fortune's wheel turns to the hour of his loss, all tears and attrition I wavered back, and still the beast pursued, forcing herself against me bit by bit, till I slid back into the sunless wood. And as I fell to my soul's ruin, a presence gathered before me on the discolored air, the figure of one who seemed hoarse from long silence. At sight of him in that friendless waste I cried, Have pity on me, whatever thing you are, whether shade or living man. And it replied, Not man, though man I once was, and my blood was lumbar, both my parents' mansion. I was born, though late, subjulian, and bred in Rome under Augustus in the noon of the false and lying gods. I was a poet and sang of old Anchias' noble son, who came to Rome after the burning of Troy. But you, why do you return to these distresses, instead of climbing that shining mount of joy, which is the seat and first cause of man's bliss? And are you then that Virgil, and that fountain of purest speech? 
my voice grew tremulous. Glory and light of poets, now may that zeal and love's apprenticeship that I poured out on your heroic verses serve me well, for you are my true master and first author, the sole maker from whom I drew the breath of that sweet style whose measures have brought me honor. See there, immortal sage, the beast I flee. For my soul's salvation, I beg you, guard me from her, for she has struck a mortal tremor through me. And he replied, seeing my soul in tears, He must go by another way who would escape this wilderness, for that mad beast that leers before you there suffers no man to pass. She tracks down all, kills all, and knows no glut, but feeding, she grows hungry, and she was. She mates with any beast, and will mate with more before the greyhound comes to hunt her down. He will not feed on lands or loot, but honor, and love and wisdom will make straight his way. He will rise between Feltro and Feltro, and in him shall be the resurrection in the new day of that sad Italy for which Nissus died, and Turnus, and Euralus, and the maid Camilla. He shall hunt her through every nation of sick pride, till she is driven back forever to hell, whence envy first release her on the world. Therefore, for your own good, I think it well you follow me, and I will be your guide, and lead you forth to an eternal place. There you shall see the ancient spirits tried in endless pain, and hear their lamentation as each bemoans the second death of souls. Next you shall see upon a burning mountain souls in fire, yet content in fire, knowing that whensoever it may be, they will yet mount into the blessed choir, to which, if it is still your wish to climb, a worthier spirit shall be sent to guide you. With her shall I leave you, for the king of time who reigns on high forbids me to come there, since living I rebelled against his law. He rules the waters and land and air, and there holds court, his city and his throne. O oh, blessed are they he chooses, and I to him, poet, by that God to you unknown, lead me this way. Beyond this present ill, and worse to dread, lead me to Peter's gate, and be my guide through the sad halls of hell. And he then followed, and he moved ahead in silence, and I followed where he led.